Hello artists, how are you today? It's Stephanie Ani coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River here near Willow Creek, California. Oz and I welcome you to the studio and we are very happy you are here with us today. Ozzy is currently playing ball. I dug under the shelving to um, pull out all of the balls. He's got about five laying down right now. So if you hear some stumbling around and bouncing around, that's, that's what's going on. All right, this is my um, front cover. And then this is the collage that I put together on that back side of it. And it says, this book is dedicated to the person who asks, what, 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 where, 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 when, 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 how, 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 who, 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 why, 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 from the moment she opens her eyes. And I believe that was off of Rudyard Kipling's, uh, one of the books that I have of his. I think that's where I got it from. Not positive on that. But that's kind of what this book is about. It's like, how does all of these, how does all these different products work together? And um, so I thought it was perfect. Uh, little quotes. So what I'm doing with these collages is I'm putting some of my favorite little sayings and poetries and poems in there. And some I'm doing as paintings and others I'm just kind of playing with. So there are no rules to how you do your backgrounds. Just do something that feels harmonious to you. Now, I do want you to look at this and kind of look at how I'm putting the composition together. And if you notice here, there's red, red, red. So I'm drawing your eye through the painting. I'm doing the same with kind of this green color and the blues. You see how it's all kind of working together. There's nothing that is the same on each side, but yet I've been very careful about the composition and about the coloring and, and making it feel as harmonious as we can. So yeah, um, you could also look at this, uh, I hesitate to bring this out, but you could look at this on the color wheel and let me look here and see what my dominant colors are. I would say my dominant colors are those. Um, so those colors together are harmonious colors, meaning they're next to each other on the color wheel. And then if you go to the opposite of the color wheel, the green has that red. So I've definitely picked up those red colors throughout the layout. It's just kind of naturally how I work in kind of a harmonious and complementary way. But um, I love this little one. I've loved how this turned out. And um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Enough blah, blah, blah. Here it is. We'll chat soon. Bye. Hello, artists. Okay. So I've got this gorgeous. This is the front cover. Actually, let me look here. Which one do I want on front? Oh, I think I want that one on front. I like this one because it has a little more color to it, but oh, on the inside of my front cover, I want to put this. So let's, I have this great pile of stuff. I've just kind of gone through some of my different images and um, fun things that I have. Uh, and yeah, I'm just going to have fun with these pages. I've got a ton of, um, deli sheets that I'll be using. I'm going to bring out stamps and stencils, a little bit of, of this and that. So let me move that out of the way. Oh. Oh, isn't that beautiful? This was done with the um, gel press and paint. And then this is uh, Distress Oxides and watercolor. So this is just strips of paper. Um, all right, let me grab out some paints, I think is my best way to go here. Um, well, these are gouache. It doesn't matter if I use gouache or acrylic.
here is what I've decided to do. I went through my stash and found some cool stuff. Uh, I didn't know I was going to build up that much from the background, but um, that was the uh, Tim Holtz, uh, that's the melange um, uh, paper. And of course, I've used what, what did I use on there? The acrylic metallics. And let's put these guys down. First, these are some stamps that I got in Italy when I went to Paris last year. So I want to be sure that they're lined up right. A little bit of just licking your hand will help you move that. Licking your finger. Not that I condone that or really like to use it that way, but sometimes it does help to, to move. You could also, of course, put a little bit of Mod Podge. See? There we go. A little Mod Podge. Probably be better in this day and age to use a little Mod Podge. Actually, oh, it's not, it's not going to move now. So that is where it's just going to stay. Love those stamps. Aren't those cool? Ooh. Oh, I dig it. I dig it. I doodle doodle dig it. I dig it. I dig it. I do. I dig it. I dig it. I doodle doodle dig it. I doodle doodle dig it. Dig it. I dig it. I dig it. I doodle doodle dig it. This is um, uh, an Alfred, uh, uh, Alphonse Mucha uh, print that I just, I have a book that I've been, you know, dissecting for the last two years. And um, I decided to go through and <clears throat> take my two inch punch, circle punch to some of the images. And I love this one. Let's see here if we can't get it. I want it a little off center. It's a, I don't want it absolutely centered. The colors work really well with everything else. And now that I have that there, do I actually need the bird? Yeah. Yeah, I need the bird. I need the bird. And I've just gone through and fussy cut different things that I like, um, or just different shapes and pieces. Uh, it doesn't have to make per uh, perfect sense. But I like it. I like it. And let's see, I love this stamp too, but as I take it off here, I'm looking, I like that butterfly showing. I think if I, I think I'm going to save this for somewhere else. And, uh. This kind of reminds me of, you know, kind of the key to life is, is questioning, searching, asking your questions. So I just, this is a little Tim Holtz key, uh, key lock thingy. I can put a link down in the comments, I suppose, for them. Uh, but they're cool. You know, and that's kind of, for me, that's the key to life is, is opening your eyes and asking questions and, you know, discovering things for yourself. So 
It's a little E6000. This is what I generally use to um, glue down things that are um, heavier. Heavier. Now, I am uh, getting some heavy body gel, uh, which seems to be the recommended thing, glue, that people use for kind of um, that the layering style of um, artwork that's kind of popular right now, mixed media stuff. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that works out once I get it. It's kind of a cloudy overcast day today. We're gonna clean out that glue. Um, One of the pointy ends of a paintbrush helps sometimes with that. See, like I use it there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Blue explosion. Get back on there. This stuff stinks. This is a very stinky glue. I'm helping. I'm hoping the, the gel medium is not quite as stinky, but... There we go. And this guy. These are, um, you guys have seen me use these quite a bit in the past, just little metal embellishments. I think I'll, I have a link for these down in the Amazon comments and the Amazon links also. Filigree, I think they're called the filigree. Um, elements or something like that. Gonna need a little more glue. There we go. And since this is open, we don't need to use this type of glue for, for this little butterfly. It's overkill. But since it's out, might as well use it. This is a, I think it's a Tim Holtz butterfly. Not positive where this butterfly came from. It might have come from somebody in one of the ATC gifts. It had a white border around it. I fussy cut the white border off because I didn't like it. No white borders. I know this bird has a little bit of a white border, but we will um, definitely be doing either some Stabilo or some of the Arteza uh, water pens, and we'll go through and tone this down a little bit. But first, I'm going to give it a second to dry, and uh, we will be right back. So I'm going to take a little bit of jet black around this border of this copper tape. Uh, I could do this with gesso, which would probably be better. Um, just giving it a little frame to start out with. I'm putting a little bit of padding down because I, I want to try to minimize the pressure that's put on that um, piece there. I might be better off with one of the water brush pens, but I do want to mute this down quite a bit. So we will see here. Okay, so you guys know my stubby brush. This is an old paintbrush that I cut off half of the, um, uh, let's see, let's grab this guy. This one's, this one's a little bit long. Let's see how it's a little bit curved shape. This one is perfect. So basically how I use this is I dip it right into the water. And where's a 
cloth. A little bit too much water on my brush. It's moving it too much, kind of disintegrating it. So we're going to go back in and reestablish that line. So you see how Stabilo can make something that look actually quite dirty. Um, this piece has kind of an interesting feel to me. It's, it's almost a little bit too pastel for my liking, so I opted for something that would give it a little bit more of a dirty, grungy feel. Um, but sometimes I don't love what Stabilo does. I really don't. I don't want to cover up all the artwork that I've already done. And I think that's what sometimes happens with Stabilo. Now you can combine Stabilo with your water brush pens, which is probably what I'll do. Right now I'm kind of forced into finishing this like this. Because once you start with something, you kind of have to keep it going. And take the stabilo off of there. I'm going to add it into there though. You see how you can push that stabilo right into the edges. And that's what I like about it. And really clean up those lines. While still having the smokiness, but what you're doing is you're, you're really making it nice and crisp. Now you might ask, why would you go over it again? You've already done it. Da, da, da. Well, because I, I didn't think it was the best it could be. So, um, I'm not going to leave something looking halfway when I know it can look better. Um, you know, there is no rush on these guys. I have to edit all of this out, you know, or edit it down to five, ten minutes worth of video for you. But as you're doing artwork, you got to realize that this stuff, to make good art, takes time. And, and it's okay. There is no rush here. There is no rush. What are you going to rush off and do? You know, why not make something as good as you can possibly make it? You don't have to get anything done in one sitting. As you know, this particular page has taken me probably a few hours to do. In all reality. At least front and back. You have to try. And remember, it is all about practice. The more you practice, the better you get. And I guarantee you that that's the truth. There is not an actual artist out there who didn't have to practice to get to where they're at. And who didn't fail many, many times before they succeeded. All artists fail. They're actual artists. I've had a lot of failures. I still have a lot of failures. You guys just watch me come back from them. You guys see me fail all the time, and I fail publicly all the time.
All right, we're gonna come back and lighten a little bit of that up. We're getting closer. So this is just water. Thank you. 